Thank you for that warm welcome. So about me, I'm a Plasma developer. My main role within Plasma is fixing any time we have a crash, so my personal goal is to make sure we're more stable. And recently, I would work a lot more on the Quinn and Wayland work that we've been doing, which will come up more as we go on. So about the stock, I'm going to present some of the main problems that we have in Plasma, and even though they seem unrelated, it's sort of tied together. So I will be presenting some ideas on how we can resolve this, but they're not definite concrete plans because we're looking far into the future. We're proposing some new ideas, some new tools we can use, and then the extent to which we end up utilising them is still up for a lot of discussion. So don't take anything in this talk as definite concrete plans. It's my legal caveat. So, what makes Plasma different to all the other desktops, like Windows or Openbox? And I think if I had to summarize it in a sentence, which I did, it would be this. We have rich support for third parties to extend and customize all aspects of the desktop, which in Windows, some parts are locked down, you can't. In Openbox, there's nothing to integrate with. So, it's this part that makes Plasma very different from everywhere else. And I think it's something we can embrace, and certainly all aspects of my talk are about improving this, not getting rid of this. So, how does Plasma do this? I think you can break down Plasma into two different parts. It's in views and things, or services. So Plasma, primarily, has got the four different views that services integrate with. It's search providers, K1 on its own is just a text box and nothing. It doesn't have anything with it. It's just a text box. Plasma Shell, on its own, is just an empty taskbar with nothing in it. And you can drag around empty boxes that don't do anything. System settings on its own. It's an empty window with a sidebar that's empty until you put other things in it. So what are your services that you would put in Plasma? We have the ones that come from us, so networking, it fits into all of those different components. You might have a networking searches, you might have a networking system settings module, you have a networking applet, which is a really rich interactive applet, and then audio, keyboard, all these very important things are provided by Plasma, but a set of services. But more interestingly, your wider KDE provides parts that fit in with Plasma. So KD Connect, it's not part of Plasma, but it integrates as though it's a first class system. It integrates really well, and I think that's really good. Blue, also not part of Plasma, but it fits in completely natively. You start typing your searches, you get the results. Um, KD Telepathy, we had the applets, you can see your content there, you can even have full on chats. Again, not part of Plasma, print manager. Even K Develop has a runner, so you can load your sessions quickly. Probably don't want KDevelop to be part of Plasma. And then there's a wider community. There's a store, it's full of extra things you can download, there's a ton of applets, but there's also extra things to provide, a distro provide, extra services that fit into all of these different views. Uh, we have a place like Munich providing extra services that integrate with those views, and anyone can add anything else. I had a KCM for configuring upstarts. Not very useful now, but we have the flexibility to allow anything, and that's really important. So, moving that aside, what are some of the problems that Plasma has faced in the past and continues to face? Our biggest problems. And these are real world examples, not hypotheticals. So, KF5 came along four years ago now. Applications had a wonderful plan, they did a staggered release. Where things were done slowly over time, when you would be done in one release, then Dolphin, and Oculator. Plasma's plan, little bit less elaborate. We just did everything at all in one go. And this led to two things. We had things go missing, so you upgrade and some stuff just disappears. And we also had bugs because very few design schools will tell you this is a good idea. It's not a good idea. And we also had this, because we had this application integration, now we have a staggered release cycle. It's practically impossible for them to do it exactly on time. 
The one I think I know most about that affected me, uh, our Katie Kennedy instant messaging, the way you can tell if you're online or not, was in the Plasma Panel. So that meant as soon as Plasma had a release, we needed to have a release. We didn't have a choice in that. And when we did that, we had to start development early before Plasma 5 was released. Half of our developers weren't Plasma developers, they were just instant messaging developers. So we just cut them out completely, and then they never came back. <laughs> and other applications have the same situation. When KF6 comes along, K develop people, can you promise to do a release on day one of Plasma 6? <laughs> he's nodding, he's agreeing. <laughs> and then we have all of the stuff in the store. Even if we could control everybody in this room, which I can't, as much as I try my technical in my hand. External stuff's even higher. We have 250 Plasma to KD4, and Plasma 5 is well on its way. And that's not including all the other servers that our distro and people have. So 250 platinoids or stop working, just like that. Not ideal. Particularly given X term still runs now. So why does X term still work, but not this? And Q6 is coming. <laughs> it's possibly not a real countdown. Q not known for being entirely on schedule, but we know it's going to come. And we're going to have all of these problems again. Another problem we have is plasma is determined, the quality of plasma is determined by your weakest component of plasma. And the worst example, if you do this with Zilla query with your mad dog Zilla skills and search by duplicates, highest number of duplicates is still open in plasma shell isn't caused by anything we ship. Which is very frustrating when my job is to fix that. Because I don't want to fix a hundred different external modules from everybody. And it makes us look bad. Because they don't know that. They don't report to the platform when it's crashing. They report to us. And that's a real query that people can do. And it sucks. And even within KDE, even if we could control this stuff, it's still difficult. There's two runners that just bring down all of that. Runners being the set providers. And these are interesting because they're just not just in K-Runner, if you search far from the top, but also in the main shell. And these runners will just bring down the intricity, as I've apparently written, ah, entirety of Plasma. And that's pretty bad. We're not very robust. We look like as bad as the weakest component. And another example, a genuine one from the last academy, I was with Fred Jones at home, we're debugging why networking in Wayland didn't work. And they shouldn't be related topics. <laughs> and it was because of the touchpad module, which brought down Peter. That's not related to networking, it's not related to what we're slightly related to really, it's like that. But it doesn't make sense. And a computer on networking for most people is just an unfunctional desktop. They could probably live without being able to think of a touchpad, but if you're putting down everything, it's pretty bad. And bugs happen. I mean we can't avoid that. But we can try and minimise the impact it has on everything else, which is fine. So, something's going to break next. I don't know what. If I did, I would fix it. Security. <laughs> I mean, they've put a sign on so you're some security. And anyone can upload anything to your store. Apple Store we talked about, and this isn't the only place, but at Apple Store, people can upload QR code. Somebody could write this code, which one start up. If you're one of four people in this room, this is a very bad piece of code. <laughs> I tried to upload it on the store, but somehow I lost all my files in the process. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, we, we have nothing, and it's a problem that we don't even have a way that people could if they wanted to. There's no way to even try it if you want to focus on it. And it's all open source, so you can inspect it, but it's in a weird situation that I trust stuff from the Android store more than I trust stuff from our own store, which is a sad situation. And a lot of you are probably thinking, containers will fix this. Oh, sorry, we're going to explode. Containers. Probably thinking, there's a solution, people keep, are very obsessed right now. 
flat map, double connect, it's getting buzzwords. But they're actually a problem, not a solution. <laughs> because if KDevelop ships in a container, if it ships in a flat map, that runner isn't going to work because we don't see it from the platform side. We are not loading it. And KD Connect's probably going to ship as a flat pack snappy not too long in the future. All of its integrations aren't going to work. So containers aren't the solution right now. They're a problem that we need to address regardless. Yeah, simply one word. And they're coming. At some point, more and more things will happen, things are going to break. This isn't very uplifting talk, by the way. <laughs> so, if there are four main problems we face, I don't expect everyone in this room to agree with every point. What I expect is everyone in this room to resonate with one of these points. Or, personally, I think all four have quite a lot of better, otherwise, I wouldn't have worked. So, really, all of these problems come down to one word plugins. And the way Plasma is built at the moment is we have these different views, and everything is a plugin. And for the sake of argument, I'm counting some QML files as a plugin for this argument. So, networking, we'll have a okay runner, we'll have a plugin here, we'll have a plugin here, and then we'll have potentially its own custom communication protocol to talk between all these different green blocks. And our structure is written like this 10 minutes gone, or 10 minutes past. Okay, I'll well, speak in that. So, can we look at a different way of solving this? So, we're starting with just a search provider, because it's a really, really simple case. It's just a name, it's an icon. It's not very exciting, but it's simple and that illustrates some concepts. Instead of a plugin, we just talk to another process over demons, because we love demons. And KWender doesn't need to know about this, it's not loading any binaries. And the problem with the binaries are anytime you update that ABI, it's running in the same process, it actually needs to close. So run plugins cause all those problems we solve. So we're talking over, over Dbus, K1 doesn't need to know about this. And this service could be a standalone, very, very small binary, or it could be the central demon you have anyway. So we could be talking to KD Connect demon itself directly, rather than having multiple processes about it. So every time we type a letter, we query, we get results back, and eventually we run. And as you can tell from the times, not very really a problem. <laughs> so run the ship with .desktop file, so that we can still query and list all the things we're going to search for, and know where to ask the information from, and then we get the results back. And we can use debug activation, which is a really good way of starting applications on demand when it's needed, rather than just whenever. And you can do clever things with service names, you talk to an existing application, it's there, it'll start something, if it's not. So, we did it. This is something that shipped, and we started doing it. We inserted it alongside the cloud system, we still have plugins, but then we ported the one runner that crashed constantly into a separate binary. And all of our problems, not all of problems for them, but all of our problems went away. And they went away for the user as well, because they type a letter, Crashes, they type an infector, it respawns, it works. They'll see a sad icon in the tray, they can still report it, we can still fix it, the box goes to the right people instead of us. And the user is not so bothered, okay? but we can still fix it. And we didn't have any negative feedback, and it allowed lots of new, new users. Like I was able to take this search and with 20 lines of Python, integrate searching into an existing app that I already had without any KDE or Cube libraries. So I just implemented the interface in 20 lines. And somebody else talked to me and said, oh, now I can search all of the tabs in the console in a couple of lines. So, allowed to all these new creative users, which I didn't really expect. So the next step, I want to port in places like KDevelop and KD Connect or whatever to use this new system over the next three years so that when we move to Falcon 6, we don't have a problem. Everything will work on day zero and just continue to work. And long term, London does something similar. So maybe we can standardize protocols, which would be nice. So more excitingly, Falcon Atlas. Applets are a full on window, you've got controls, you 
can't generify it. There's no way we would have known about what Katie Kinect would have wanted to do ahead of time to come up with a protocol for it. And we would have, of course, gotten we want this first party core integration to allow it. So, wait a little bit, sir. Plus, Michelle talks about Wayland to another one. And I've got a demo, which I don't know how to force me. Oh, there's one. Okay. So, it's in a plasmoid. And I'm just going to show you input redirection works because that's the only reason we have our rating. <laughs> and that's something you couldn't do a vector there, which is showing how this works conceptually. If you do a and having pop-ups work is important because all platforms have little combo boxes and drop downs. So pop-ups are your worst. But it's doable. So we can embed random arbitrary content inside a plasmoid, mouse keyboard work, showing view, and it's all ETL generated, which is fantastic. Recycle work, pop up. And interestingly, we can run this without you having to use a radio section. Plasma itself is a client of whichever window manager you're using, if you're on X or you're on Wayland itself, and then it is a Wayland compositor to load all its other external components. So running on X is fine, even though we're using Wayland. And even things like NVIDIA or terrible ARM drivers aren't necessarily a problem because we're only dealing with very small windows. If you use shared memory, things just work. So, just works. So, putting a plasmoid in plasma sounds like it should be easy. It's not. We have extra challenges. You've got all your config pages, which are a whole separate window, you have to integrate these extra stuff. You have to deal with how you activate it and how you close it down. Pop ups, still awful. Uh, we have this plasma scripting, you know, just work out where you're doing storage, how you're handling the cycling, so all this extra stuff that just doesn't apply to embedding an arbitrary window. So we need to have two different communication services to talk between it, two different APIs to have the relevant parts on one, the relevant parts on the other. And the reason we need this is Wayland, very good at buffers, terrible at anything else. So your performance of that, in terms of rendering performance, it's fine. Is, it is an extra overhead, but not massive. In terms of memory, that is a problem. If you run every plasmoid in its own separate process, you're looking roughly 20 megabytes per plasmoid. It's not feasible. I said this wasn't an optimistic at all. But in terms of, if you batch everything together, so all of plasma workspace running one app, all of your stuff in the store running another, that's perfectly viable. And that wouldn't have a significant overhead. So, it's not cost free, but I think the costs are worth it. And it's in any case of choosing when we go down this strategy and when we don't. So, a rollout plan. Now we can embed random other windows inside applets, so even on super trucks in a panel, and hide it when you want to walk past. And it's a gimmick, but it's a gimmick that we can put out and have users test and confirm that things are working and start fixing it. Running up this kind of works, but it will be about a year before, before it's fully on par. And then we can start looking at sandboxing some things by default, picking up separation to make things more stable. And my long term dream, in this state, this year here, maybe we can just send platform challenge to just a really thin, tiny compositor that just loads external content and doesn't do anything. And that would be super nice, super stable, awesome. So config modules in system settings, effectively, it's exactly the same as plasma. You have a window, you stick it in a window. If anything, it's simpler because then you have one at a time and they're quite large. And it's actually quite good because we already use multiple windows in system settings. I uh, don't know if most of you know, you can't really mix QWidget and QWid content. So there's a widget backend and then another window for your sidebar and another window for your content. So actually, we're reducing the number of windows by doing a compositor, even if it makes no sense. And that means we can do awesome transitions when you change the system settings module. Something not currently possible, not really a reason to do a whole port, but it probably looks pretty cool. And they will be happy if things slide out. 
So, any demons in background services? This is a challenge to fix. Done. But what's interesting is we've started doing this already without having this sort of plan. We've started seeing people migrate away into running our power, uh, power management now under the separate process. It's a general trend that I think we're naturally heading towards. Long term, I think this is where we want to end up. And this is very similar to Android. You have your one app, and then you tell it to spawn a window when you click on the window. It's normally just running a background service. If you open system settings, you tell it to open a window. It puts a window in system settings. If it's written, you tell it to create an applet, it sends you a window for your applet. So you just have this one core, and then you don't have custom communication between all these different little parts. I think it's a clean solution for app developers, and if you want app developers to come to the Plasma, this is nice. It will encourage people. So, to wrap up conclusions, I think most of our problems are caused by plugins. And not the only solution to your problem, and not always a wrong solution, they're not always the right solution. So, I'm presenting another option that we can use in all these different parts of Plasma. And I think it will really help us if that's the direction we choose to take and we can choose how much we go down the different routes as time goes on. So I imagine most of you will have questions. I don't want to answer them now in case I don't get an answer. So we have a boss where as a part of the team we can discuss where we want to take everything, much more long term, what our plans and everything. So this is happening at 3.30 on Monday. So if you found this interesting, come along. If you didn't, have some fun. And the advertisement, I also have two other buffs coming up uh, about plasma, generic other plasma related topics on Monday morning. And if you have an application that you haven't tested on the way in, you should have done. But if you haven't, or if you have any problems, come to your session for a just time way to fix Quinn. I will have a look at your application, fix it, just be in practice, make everything work. <laughs> okay. So, any questions? Another topic on that is, I don't think we need to port everything. 
like it was stuff in KDD or KDA, as I call it, um, which can say it like free space amplifier. You're right, making it a separate application is stupid. That's not. So it's about adding an extra tool we can use and then use the right tool for your job. And I don't think plugins are always the right tool for your job. Not the way to many of the platform currently work. 